Hello everyone, and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement 2. This is a super mini mail call, and just as a reminder, these videos, I'm just gonna open one package from a viewer. So if it's like one little tiny thing in here, it's gonna be a very short video, or if it's a box full of goodies, well, it's gonna be a bit of a longer video. This package has a label from my PO box stuck on top of the shipping label. So I think it's from Joe and I can't tell where Joe is, what city or state he lives in. All right, so what do we got here? There's a note. All right, actually this is not a mail call item because I couldn't even read if it was on the label or not. Uh, please put mail call if you're sending me something so I know this was actually something I ordered myself. And what these are, are DB19 connectors. This is for hooking up to the floppy drive port on an Apple II or a Macintosh and the matching hoods as well. And uh, basically I bought these so I can try to make something for the Atari ST to emulate a hard drive. And the ST uses uh, these same connectors here. But you know what, it's hard to get these these days so I figured I'd order these now just so I'd have them on hand. I think these exist because of some retro YouTubers, and I apologize, I'm forgetting who it was. It might've been the people behind Big Mess of Wires, and I think there were so many of them that they ended up selling excess off to other companies. So I ordered these from this company here, Innovative Electronics and Computing. So if you are looking for some of these yourself, you can find them at this company. I think there are other places you can get them as well. All right, so this wasn't a real mail call item, so I am gonna grab another package. All right, welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement 2. Yep, this is a super mini mail call, and I know I just said that again, but uh, we have another package here. So this package comes from Stephen in Coventry in the UK. So hi to all my UK viewers. Thank you, Stephen, for including customs documents. As you can see, no one looked inside of them. Here it is, all righty, 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 righty. So there's a letter here and that's it for the box. The letter reads, big fan of your channel and a massive fan of Rami. You know what, Rami hasn't been out on the channel lately. So actually Rami may have never made an appearance on the second channel. I think Rami would approve of the following. It's a four megabyte ST RAM expansion. This is an open source design by Agro, Agrinland. Agrinland, I'm sorry about the, the bad pronunciation. It's available on GitHub for anyone who wants to make their own. It's the initial version that requires one bodge wire and the silk screen for the CAS1L and CAS1H needs swapping, nothing major. I've included some photographic instructions to help. All the PCB riser pins are included, but not fully soldered. This is so you have some wiggle room when trying to push them into the motherboard holes. Once you got them in, you can be fully soldered up. Be aware, I obviously have not tested this particular board. I checked my solder on the RAM chips themselves and they seem good, but feel free to double check yourself. I've included two spare RAM chips just in case the ones I already soldered have issues. Otherwise, feel free to feed them to Rami. <laughs> Keep up the good work. Really enjoyed seeing you work on the ST series machine. Let's hope one day you might get to play with a TT or a Falcon. Kind regards, Steve. And Steve, as I said, he lives in Coventry, England, home of the motor car, jet engine, pocket watches, and the color Coventry blue. All right. And we have the solidstatesociety.co.uk, retro services in the UK, active on the Exos Atari forums. All right, so this is the module here. Now I'm gonna be having to show the installation of this on the main channel because I, I'd like to do that as a proper Atari ST video. But um, I had mentioned in my Atari ST repair series or whatever that's called, that I was gonna try to reinstall that original Marpet RAM expansion card that was installed on there that brings that Atari 520 ST up to a full four megabytes. And Steve emailed me and he's like, do not install that thing. It's terrible. Well, not just that one, but all the RAM expansion modules are terrible. I happen to have that RAM expansion module in this box here. So I wanna just bring this out so we can take a look at what's the difference between the one that Steve just sent me and these old school original ones for the ST. Okay, so this was the one that was installed on the machine when I got it. So here is a little board. It's got the four megabytes installed like with copious amounts of hot glue. And that's really because the clips had broken off at some point on the SIM socket. So the fix, 
fix in quotes <laughs> was hot glue. In addition, this particular kit here, which has these two little boards, was not designed to work on the 520ST. The 520ST just has 512K from the factory and that's it. There's really no easy way to do RAM expansion. And to be honest, I think all the Ataris, except for the later ones like the STE and some of the, the, the newer ones, um, really the RAM expansions were quite hard. There were definitely 520STs, later versions than the one that I got, that had space on the motherboard for another set of chips, 16 RAM chips, that would allow you to upgrade to one megabyte. But the early models, what you got is what you got. So the way that these old RAM upgrades work, and there are all sorts of different ones that are less elegant than this, is that basically there's a little board, and that's this one here in my left hand. This plugs in on top of the MMU chip. And it has the little pins that push in over the socket. And what this allows the RAM to do is pick up all of the address lines that it needs, address and select lines, to basically select the memory. Now the MMU chip, which is the memory management chip on the Atari, it already supports four megabytes right out of the box. Like they were thinking ahead when they designed that chip, but they just didn't allow an easy way to upgrade to RAM. And it's really too bad because they could have just added like an expansion header, kind of like the uh, Amiga 500 has, that would allow for easy RAM upgrades. But for whatever reason, Atari didn't do that. So what this does is it picks up the signals it needs for the address lines and the select lines off the MMU itself. And then what this one does is another little board here that goes underneath the shifter chip. And the shifter is like the video display chip. And this is picking up all the data lines. So data lines zero through 15, so all 16 bits. And with these two cables here, you're able to uh, get your four megabytes of RAM if you disable all the memory on the motherboard. And if you recall from the video, if you haven't seen it, I recommend you go watch it. Uh, I had to re-enable the onboard memory because some traces were cut and little bodge wires were installed to disable the memory that's on the motherboard so that this four megabytes could replace that 512K, which is basically one bank of memory. And then it took over the other bank with the other two megs of RAM here. Problem is with these that make them flaky is that this little thing here that you push over the MMU chip damages the PLCC socket. It just all in all is a bad thing and is very unreliable because if this thing gets dislodged a little bit, um, you know, the, there's problems with your RAM, et cetera, et cetera. This little board is actually totally fine. It plugs into the motherboard into a socket and then you take the shifter chip and you plug that in. This is gonna be reliable and not problematic. Um, but this one is the problem. So what this open source project is all about is you have this little board here that has four megabytes of RAM right on it. So these are not the types of pins that will go into sockets very easily. So probably the recommended thing you do is you actually remove all the chips, don't install sockets, and then you just install this right into the motherboard holes themselves, permanently upgrading the computer to a full four megabytes of RAM. Now, I don't know, I was thinking that I would install sockets on the motherboard um, and then I would put the round like pins on here instead of these square ones here. And that would allow me to push this into the sockets and then remove it and go back to RAM chips at a, at a later date. But I guess there's just no point to that. So actually I, I'll put that out to the viewers. Put a comment down below if you think I should take the RAM out, install sockets, change these pins out with the round type that can go into sockets and just be able to reverse it. Or should I just solder this in directly onto the motherboard and call it good? So the reason why this board works without a bunch of ribbon cables like this is because all of the signals you need, almost all the signals you need for the RAM are on the 16 RAM chips. Right, so there's address line nine, and that currently is not run to any part of the motherboard. That's on the MMU only, so you gotta run that wire. Then you have CAS one and two high and low, which are reversed with a silk screen, so no problem. I just wire those up appropriately, and you have RAS one. So with this particular project, if you have an ST where the RAM is laid out like this, and I think this might work on the one meg STs as well, where you have 512K laid out like this, and then you have another 512K right next to it. You would take out all the memory and then just install this 
into one of the two banks, um, I think this should work for you. But I'm not totally sure because I'm, I'm far from an expert in Atari STs. I mean, I basically know almost nothing. So definitely check out the GitHub link. I will put a link down below. But I know for sure that this will work in my ST in the 520. And when I put this into the motherboard, I'll get the full four megabytes. And of course, if I solder this right in the motherboard, and it's not even in a socket, it will be dead reliable. You could shake the computer as hard as you can and the RAM's not gonna come out and you're not gonna have problems like with this crap here. There won't be any um, issues there. Now, Steve mentioned he sent along extra RAM chips. Here they are. He did solder these two on here and they are looking really good. So when I go to do the install, of course, I'm gonna check to make sure we don't have any bridged contacts. But to be honest, I am not seeing any right now, but we'll check that out with the microscope. And I mean, there's not really much more to it. That's it. So I have to say, this is a very, very cool project. And honestly, the hardest thing is going to be removing all the RAM out of the machine, which will be a little bit fiddly, but I just have to fire up the Hakko desoldering iron and shouldn't be too difficult, especially with a little heat applied to the board, stuff like that. But, um, you know, without having tried this myself yet, if you have an ST, an older one like I do, and you were looking to upgrade the RAM, don't try to use one of these. I mean, they're just so fiddly and so junky. Try to use a project like this. So, Steve, thank you very much for saying this RAM upgrade all the way from the UK, especially um, with the RAM already included in these extra chips here. I really appreciate it, and I'm looking forward to installing this into the ST. It will be a main channel video really upgrading the RAM on that thing. And um, yeah, not going back to this uh, very sketchy one. Don't forget to check the link in the description for the GitHub repo to this if you want to make your own or enhance it. Maybe someone can design a new one of these that fits the other RAM layouts on the ST so uh, more people can take advantage of this particular thing. Anyhow, that's it for this video. Uh, thanks very much to my patrons for all the support you give the channel, both channels. Really appreciate it. And if you'd like to become a patron yourself, you can check the link in the description so you can do that. Don't forget to check out my main channel if you haven't already. If you're coming to this channel, having never seen Adrian's Digital Basement, you know, it's possible. And um, yeah, I mean, I think that's it. So everyone, stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.